welcome to Las Vegas. I am at the top of Planet Hollywood Las Vegas Resort and Casino in this building. The reigning queen of modern country, Miranda Lambert, is holding court and bringing more heat than a July day in this desert town. Woo! <laughs> When you are the most decorated artist in Academy of Country Music Awards history, some might wonder, what do you do next? For Miranda, it was one goal, take Vegas by storm. Miranda has sold out more than 30 nights of her wildly successful Velvet Rodeo residency, and she is not done yet. So when my fellow Texas friend said, hit the road with me, I knew just the way to see Sin City. For Usher, we had to roll up in a Rolls Royce. So for my girl Miranda, I had to roll up in a pretty new truck. Get your cowboy boots and your rhinestones ready, Tampam. So come with me behind the red velvet rope into Miranda's Velvet Rodeo Residency. Come on in and go lift. And let me tell you, you're not gonna see this anywhere else. Let's go talk to Miranda. I'm giving up on love, love's giving up on me. How are you? Congratulations! You. Good to see you. So I'm looking at your name here, and I know that people don't like to be compared, but I saw a quote that compared you to Dolly and Reba. It was from Keith Urban, he said, the first time I ever heard her voice, it just resonated with me. It is one of those immediately recognizable country voices. Many people are great singers. Not many singers are originals. I mean, that's that's a huge compliment coming from him, especially because, you know, he's was my first big tour I ever did. Um, I was playing bars in Texas. You know, I was 19. That was kind of like my college a little bit. So what yeah. it felt like, because I'd never, I went to DFW and flew out for the first time ever on a plane by myself like headed out like sort of it felt like my mom was like I felt like you were leaving for college yeah. a little bit um but Keith was my first tour after I signed my record deal with Sony and um I was like oh that's how you're supposed to do it well you mentioned your mom it's consistent though with what she told you I read an interview I think it was in success magazine where she said just be yourself I'm paraphrasing but it was be authentic be who yeah. you are be the original that's what she told me from day one when I started this journey. She said, know who you are and stick with it and don't change for anybody. And that advice has like carried me through so many. But it's hard, right? It's yeah, hard I mean, in this business, being a woman. I think you describe your style as feminine badass. Yeah, a little bit of, little <laughs> little bit of country, a little bit of rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's been very important to really just go with my gut and always do whatever is true to me, you know? Yeah even if it's not the most popular decision or it makes the journey longer, it's the long way around, it's, <laughs> you have to do it. You yeah. just have to be authentically yourself and, and stick to your guns. And it, it's worked well for me. It's worked well. And I think about the little kid, I think you were around 10 years old and you went to see Garth Brooks. And now here you are and just across the street, Garth Brooks, the person who lit the fire or seeing his name in lights and going to his concert at that young age lit the fire. It did. I went to see Night 2 at the Texas Stadium when he did Three Nights and I was 10 years old and I just, I feel like that was my first sort of, I mean it was my first concert, yeah. but it was my first um, time to see like a stage that big and a platform that big and you know my dad plays guitar and rap songs so I grew up around music yeah. but I'd never seen a stage like that and I think that's what really lit the fire for sure. So was it the, the bigness of it to your point your dad exposed you to music we both grew up in Texas music is the fabric of our lives there's yep. no diner that you walk into there's no church that you walk yep. into there's no school that you walk into and there's not music but then suddenly music is big yeah it's lights it's this yeah and he uh, that night set the stage on fire which I couldn't believe which I might do that now too. Which is why too. you're doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like, flew, you know, like flew over the crowd and it was just, just a huge production. It was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. And so it is crazy because now I'm getting to do all the, the, all the things you've the, wanted the to gags. do. Yeah. I love fun. it because that's the thing. I think this is the first show you've used pyrotechnics. Yeah. Right. And sold out 
30 plus shows. Now you're extending into the spring. Yes. This started out as, I believe you used the word a recon. You know, you came in to see a couple of shows. Yeah. To see what it was like. And then yeah. you put your original stamp on it. The three we, shows you went to see were? We went to see Re, uh, Reba and Brooks and Dunn, mm -hmm. and Shania Twain and George Street. Yeah. And we just, 10 of us from my, my band and crew and friends, we just came and Shania was in the same theater. So I wanted to see how the room felt and how the stage looked and that trip really helped. You've been on the road constantly. That's what you know. That's what you're built for. Yeah. And then you're coming here, the first recreational trip, but you know that trip really is about a commitment like none other that you'd ever made. Yeah, I mean, it's very different to be kind of parked in one spot. And I mean, the only, the closest thing I'd done to a residency was five shows at Billy Bob's. <laughs> so <laughs> like, this was like, oh my gosh, like we're not gonna be on tour at all, that's right. crazy. So it just was so different not being on tour. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I've lived on a bus most of my adult life. And so it was just a shift and being away from home and, you know, our life is in Nashville. We split time in Texas, Nashville, yeah, yeah. and New York. But you got the farm with like 300 acres. Yeah, of, outside yeah. of Nashville, and, and we're in New York a ton because my husband's yeah. from there. And I go back to Texas a lot, but it just, this was like, oh, we're going way out west, and we're gonna like make it a second home, you know? Went to the and, desert. Yes, which I love. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so those were just all the thoughts I had, and like wondering how it was gonna feel instead of rolling into these tiny towns I've loved for so long, you know, these towns that I go see my fans that have been with me all this time. There are so many things that I adore and love about you. I love your commitment to your brand and your business. Thank you for saying that. It is very important to me. Um, all of that is, it all stems from the music. And the way that I've been so truthful in my music and just told the good, bad, and the ugly, I feel like is why these things can be an extension of what that music is, because it is my story. It's a lot of our stories. It's the vulnerability, though. Yeah. You say the good, bad, and the ugly. It takes a lot. I yeah. mean, so much of your music is you essentially opening your diary. You don't know how it's going to be received, but then you look around the audience and people are crying as you sing the song about the house that you go back to. If I could just come in, I swear I'll leave. Won't take nothing but a memory from the house that built me. When you see people crying, or receiving what you're putting out. What does that feel like? People cry at House of Build Me every night. Every and night. I finally, after all these years, learned how to not cry with them. <laughs> I try really hard because like, they work really hard on my face. Yeah. I don't want to go out there. Why do you think that, cry. I mean, obviously the lyrics, we understand. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's because you reveal the backstory? What, what is it that stings the heart where it, a stranger is there crying with you? That song just feels like everybody's song. And you know, I had a really good friend who played in my band for forever, for 22 years, Scotty Ray, and we lost him last year, but. I saw your social media post. Yeah, and but he said the most pointed thing I didn't think of when he heard that song. He said, I didn't have that house and I wish I did. Because I was thinking it was everybody's story because they all had their dogs in their backyard and their handprints on the stairs. Mm -hmm. And he said, I wish I had a house that built me. No, I'm crying. Exactly. No, I'm crying. So I never even thought about it that way. Yeah. So I, some, so whoever, every person in the room either wishes they had that or did. And I feel like that's where the emotion comes up. And that's when you know you've done your job. It's when people cry, you know? Yeah. As a songwriter, that's kind of part of it.